Yes, collect call, please. Collect to Elizabeth Sayers, Los Angeles. KL58937. Thank you. Martha Sayers. Oh, please hurry. Please. She'd be here. You a sister? Yes. She just went to the store. Ask me to give you a key. It's your sister, Miss Sayers. She's gone crazy in there. Screamed and locked the door. I tried all the doors and windows. They're all locked. Excuse me, please. Martha? Martha, it's me, Elizabeth. Open the door, please. K-5-8-9-3-7. 
Can you break it in? Report, Miss Ayers. Lieutenant, my sister did not commit suicide. She had no reason to kill herself. She was happier than she's been in years. But no one could have gotten into the house. The doors and the windows were all locked from the inside. She did not commit suicide. Why would she catch a plane from Massachusetts, hire a car at the airport, and drive all the way to my house to kill herself? Well, there's no rationale with suicide, Miss Ayers. I understand how upset you are, no, but if you could... No, you don't understand anything. If she was going to kill herself, there were worse times, like when our parents died or when we were separated by different schools hundreds of miles apart, but not now. But you did admit that she was a melancholy girl. That she was lonely. Well, you hardly saw her during the past few years. Then ask her friends at school. We did. Did you try her ex-roommate, Lucy Dembro? Do you really think she would make that much difference? Yes, she was her roommate for two years. She knows Martha. Okay, Miss Sayers. We went to Miss Lucy Dembrow in Massachusetts, and to some of the other classmates at the academy, and the headmistress. No one could give us any further information. I can't accept that. There just isn't enough evidence for us to pursue it any further. I'm sorry. But the case is closed. Not for me, it isn't. I couldn't fly into the funeral. I mean, there was no warning, none. I told the police when they called it. Everything was fine. I mean, just great. Martha was busy and working. So was I. If you don't like the, the sherry, I can run up some vodka. No, no, please don't worry about it. I don't oh. drink much. I just grabbed this little place right after graduation. I sure hope my guardian sings for the loot. Lucy, did Martha keep a diary or anything like that? Oh, you know it better than that. No memories for her. Life was now. Well, something was going very wrong. It had to be. Nothing I knew of. Sure you wouldn't like some vodka? No, thank you. She wasn't upset or anxious or anything? Oh, anxious, maybe. About our graduation and you and her getting your own place and finally being together. Nothing else. Like what? Someone, something at the school, maybe. <laughs> it has to be something there. No. It had to be something that happened at the academy. I would know if there was anything else. No, I'm telling you, no. I'm going there. Well, you won't find out anything. Nothing. Nothing. I've got to try. You won't tell anyone you saw me. Or that you talked to me, promised me. Do you understand to no one? I'm, I'm sorry. Martha's death and everything. I. Please forgive me. Yes, of course.
Roberta Lockhart. We're the welcoming committee from your class. Now, the dragon lady had us memorize your short welcoming speech. I'm afraid <laughs> it'll make you throw up. I'm Elizabeth Morgan. We know. Um, we've been expecting you. This is Debbie Jones. Hi. And that's Jody Keller. Hi. Hi. Uh, Jody, why don't you get the bag? Okay. The dragon lady wanted us to uh, show you around. <laughs> to see that you were fed, housed, settled. Made to feel like one of us within 15 minutes of your arrival. How are we doing? I said it home already. That's good. The dragon lady Does said Does the lady have another name? Headmistress. She is a bad painter, a worse sculptress, and a lousy musician. <laughs> She's a perfect headmistress for an academy of fine arts. Those who can do, those who can't teach. But this place has a marvelous reputation. Hey, listen. A lot of the professors are super. Really super. <laughs> Jody's got a crush on the head of the fine arts department. <laughs> we all do. It's a school hobby. Uh-huh. If you like that sort of thing. Pouligny Montrachet, 69. <laughs> she does not speak French. <laughs> she just reads labels very well. <laughs> to our new friend, take a big swallow, because you're going to need it for the dragon lady. Cheers. We here at Salem Academy feel that girls of good breeding are more easily groomed into young ladies of culture and refinement. We do have our traditions here. But then I suppose, like most traditions, they're meant to be broken. Not all of them. Oh, good. I, I'm so pleased to hear you say that. I don't know. It seems to me that so many young people today, especially in the arts, tend to have little regard for um, traditional techniques, the classic forms. Picasso was a realist painter before he was an Impressionist. It's a lovely reference, my dear. Now, this academy has its own tradition. Under different names, it has been here, in this very place, for over 300 years. <laughs> well, Elizabeth. I realize that you must be very tired after your long trip, but since you uh, enrolled after the quarter began, I think it would be wise for you to start your classes today. Thank you for accepting me. Only because you qualify. Now, I want you to have one of these. Since we're some distance from the main power lines, we often have quite erratic and exasperating electrical failures. <laughs> Nothing to be frightened of. You just keep that in your room. Usually the blackouts last only a short time. Now, here's your curriculum, and this is uh, your list of classes for today. Professor Clamp at Graphic and Fine Arts, Professor Delacroix, Behavioral Psychology. Yes, I think you'll find them very interesting, both of them very interesting. Good luck, Elizabeth. I hope you'll find Salem Academy as rewarding as I did when I was a student here. Thank you. This is William speaking. Yes. Yes. Yes, the new girl just arrived. So, if illusion and reality are different, they're also very much the same. What we think we see is as real as what we actually see. Example, optical illusion. How many see the squares coming out from the canvas, projecting out, hands? Right, how many see the opposite? The box is going into the canvas. Okay, now what I'm going to do, on signal, I'll clap my hands, you'll blink your eyes, and then stare right into the drawing. And those of you who see the reverse of the image you just saw, raise your hands. All right, ready? Blink. Okay, now stare at that canvas. Hands? Yeah. Good. Good. Now 
Everybody but our new classmate, who was obviously concentrating. Sorry, I guess I wasn't concentrating. No, I think you were concentrating on something and therefore locked into your mind the very first image you saw. You have to let your mind hang loose. But I did blink my eyes. Without your mind. The artist has to be free to see things in different ways, to dare to see things unlike anyone has ever seen them before. Now, let's look at some of our own masterpieces. We have Roberta's landscape, which is still rather obvious, but I'm sure she'll see more as she develops. And Debbie's gloomy view. Oh, she brightens things up a bit when she goes back to work, or when she finds a new boyfriend. <laughs> All right, just remember, everything is illusion and reality except for the grade you get at the end of the term. Until then, condemn nothing. Embrace everything. And hang loose. Okay? See you tonight. You're the only one who does. The girl in it, she's very pretty. Is she a student here? Was. Martha Sayers. She's dead now. Were you very close? Not really. I just thought that she... What? Fitted into that room. You ready for round two? Yeah, what's our next class? Rats. You'll see that the eating cycle of the rodents will become more intense. They'll work harder and fight harder to get food that sometimes will be where they expect it and sometimes it will not. We'll teach them that the food is always behind the red door. And when they have that well learned, we'll take the food away and put it behind the white door. And when they learn that, we'll switch again. And again. And again. To what end, Roberta? To frustrate it, uh, drive it crazy. Why would I want to do that? Debbie. I don't know. Of course not. I might as well ask the rodents as ask you. Elizabeth, what's the purpose of this experiment? To make them passive. And why would we want to do that? So that they're not able to fight back again? Exactly. To show that a mind can be broken to any level by manipulation and locked on that level to make it believe what we want, to act as we wish. Dismissed. Mistress to notify her family. No, we can't. Why not? Doesn't have any parents. She's only got a guardian. He's somewhere in Europe. Hi. 
Debbie, the doctor will be here soon. Well, what for? I, I don't need a doctor. Have you had this before? Had what? Don't you remember coming out of the psych class and suddenly screaming? Like you were in some terrible pain. I don't feel any pain. Hey, what time is it? 6.30. I want to go wash my face. I don't want to be late for Dr. Clampett's wine party. just dismissing it. I just hate to feed something like this on such flimsy evidence. Look, we're not asking you to judge Professor Delacroix. Just talk to him about his class. About why he's so hard on Debbie. Then you draw your own conclusions. And what if I draw none? Then we'll have to drop it. Unless... Unless what? Unless something else happens. Well, let's just wait and see if something else happens. If it ever does. Where's Jody? She promised to come. She's still doing office duty for the dragon. Mm. You needn't watch the clock, my dear. I'll let you know when your time is up. Yes, ma'am. How is Debbie? She's fine now. Jody, have you been aware of any unusual conduct in your teachers or your classmates? I mean, other than Debbie's outburst. No, ma'am. If that's the doctor... If that's the doctor, tell him I still want him to come over. Salem Academy. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. It's the Boston police. Lucy Deborah committed suicide. It's two of us. Debbie, are you awake? Were you asleep? No. I couldn't sleep. I hope you don't mind. No, I don't mind. 
I didn't know her, but that girl's suicide really shook me up. Lucy? Mm. Lucy was nice. She was really nice. At the party, you said that makes two of us. Martha. Martha Sayers. She committed suicide, too. Isn't that the girl in your painting? What do you think made them do it? I don't know. It's like... They were rats in Delacroix's maze. Maybe we all are. I wish those lights would come on again. I meant what I said about your painting. I really do like it. But that Martha girl seems scared to death in it. I paint what I feel. What is she so scared of? I don't know. Was it that room? Something in it, maybe? Where is that room, Debbie? It's so strange. It's so cold and dark. It looks like a dungeon. It, it's like it, it was a memory. It, it's like it was a room I saw a long, long time ago. Do you know where? <laughs> Here. I'm almost sure, I'm, I am sure, it was right here in this building. Well, I, I better let you get some sleep. I'll see you tomorrow. Night.
your painting. I found it. No. No! No, I invented that room. It's identical. I have never, never seen a room like that. Never. What are you so afraid no, of? I'm not afraid. Tell me, please. Nothing, nothing. I, I, I didn't have anything to do with it. With what? Nothing to get out of my room. What's going on? I told her that I'd found the room in her painting. It's in the cellar of this building. So? Well, she's terrified of something in the painting. Or something she thinks is in that painting. Look, Elizabeth, she's a very emotional girl. You saw that. And there's some creepy legend about a bunch of people who were killed in a cellar around here a long time ago. How is it supposed to have happened? Well, they say during the Salem witch trials, there were eight young women who were accused of witchcraft and hung in one of the cellars. Yeah, but look, all these old houses have cellars. It could have been any one of them. I'm going to bed. It's a good idea for all of us. Roberta. There was someone in that room tonight. I saw him. For God's sake, don't tell Debbie. Sooner or others later, but without exception, all are driven to various forms of disorientation, a kind of random, wild action that humans might call psychotic behavior. Now, the subjects are in abject terror. Let's examine what they're afraid of. Roberta. Well, it looks like they're more mad than scared to me. It's their terror that motivates their anger. The same is true of human beings. We're all apt to react more strongly to terror than any other emotion. To react violently, even to kill out of terror. But don't let this experiment fool you. Humans don't show their terror as do rodents, running and screeching. Sometimes terror can break down all the fibers of resistance so that, so that a complete passivity takes over. And human reaction, though passive, is most dangerous in this state of terror. Elizabeth, what have you gotten out of this experiment so far? Well, I'm not really sure. Do you want us to recognize the terror element or the motivation to violence? Jody. Beats me. I'm more lost than the rodents are. <laughs> I wonder if Debbie is taking this experiment as lightly as you do. We'll continue tomorrow. Boy, is he weird. Yeah, and he's weirder every day, too. Somebody really ought to talk to the dragon lady about him. See you later. Yeah. I wonder what he meant about Debbie. Be sweet. Roberta? Hmm? I think it was Professor Delacroix that I saw in the cellar last night. What makes you think it was him? basement, the wine cellar, that room. It's all like his rat maze. Maybe we better look at it again. We could go down there tonight after everybody's gone to sleep. What if I'm wrong? That's not what scares me. What if you're right?
We look for props to use in the play. It's back here. saw a door like that before. That's how they made them. Hundreds of years ago. What's the meaning of this after hours? You know the rules. Debbie's dead. What? We found her body in, in, in the cellar. But how? We don't know. It looks like she committed suicide. Oh. Oh, dear God. I'll have to call the sheriff. This is Mrs. Williams, the headmistress at Salem Academy. We need you right away. Please hurry. Yes. Thank you. They'll, they'll locate the sheriff as quickly as possible. What do we do about Debbie? I'll ask Dr. Clamper to lock the cellar door and wait for the sheriff. And I want you to promise me to say nothing to the rest of the girls until after the sheriff arrives. I don't want to panic in the middle of the night. Yes, Miss Van. Lucy Dambrell and that Sayers girl? Oh, come on, Roberta. You can't believe they all committed suicide. Well, it would be one hell of a coincidence. It sure would. Three girls from the same school? No, they were murdered. Or at least driven to do what they did. You mean like the rats in the maze? 
I'd bet my life on it. What do you know about Delacroix? Not much. But his personnel file reports are in those cabinets. The Dragon Lady keeps them on everybody. Let's take a look. Come on. Uh... Della. Wait a minute. It's gone. All right. Now let's look for Lucy Dembrowse and Martha Sayers. What for? Just a hunch. No file on Martha Sayers. Yeah, Lucy Dembrowse is gone, too. Maybe she took them out after they died. Let's look for Debbie Jones. It's gone. But the headmistress didn't know she was dead until just now. She wouldn't take him out of here just to hide him someplace else. That doesn't make any sense. She probably doesn't even know they're gone. Let's check out Delacroix's lab. Shouldn't we wait for the sheriff? It might be too late. Okay. I'll tell you one thing. I'm checking out of here first thing in the morning. I mean, what's the matter? I've just thought of another one of your great coincidences. Something all three girls had in common. What? They all of them had no one to help them. All their parents are dead. Elizabeth, so were mine, but you don't see me killing myself over it. Come on. They were slaughtered. They were slaughtered. I know why you came here, and I know who sent you. But it won't stop me. It won't silence me. It killed them the way it wants to kill me. Who, who killed them? It wasn't a person. You know it wasn't a person. Not me. I won't give in, not ever! going on? Thank God it's you. Delacroix was in his lap. He's killed all his animals. He's gone crazy. He thinks somebody's after him. Where is he now? Uh, he ran toward the woods. I'll try to stop No, him. he's got a gun. Wait for the police. They're on their way. Mrs. Williams told me. I uh, took care of Debbie. Now, look, if they see him with a gun, they might shoot him. Maybe you'll listen to me. You two wait here and don't scare the other girls. Wait right here.
Take care of himself. Oh, he's something else. I've never met anybody like him. You never will. For all of us in school, and especially those of us without parents, he's fulfilled a very special need. We can't just stay here and do nothing. We're doing exactly what he told us to do. I always do that. Sounds to me like you're in love. <laughs> Maybe. Very special kind of love. See, when I first came to the academy, I was really lost. He gave me confidence in myself. He gave me a belief in my own... ability. I was thinking of the word power. Power? To do what? Well, not that kind of power. Power to live. Power to never feel vulnerable again. Never feel like your life is right on the edge of being wiped out. And if it were, nobody would care. Nobody would give a damn. He gave you all that? And more. He can't help you if you fight him. He can't help you if you resist him. Who wants to fight him? Right now, I could use all the help I can get. Well, I guess it was easier for you. You had parents and a family. No, all I had was a sister. She's gone now. My real name is Sayers. Martha Sayers was my sister. You see, I never really believed that she committed suicide. That's why I came here. When she was here, Dr. Clamp had tried to help her. She wouldn't listen to him. You know, I think we're getting very close to finding out what really happened to her. And Lucy. And Debbie. I hope so, Elizabeth. I really do. I couldn't find him. He got away. The police? I don't know what's keeping them, but he could come back here looking for you two. Maybe he always knew that Elizabeth was Martha Sayer's sister. I'm sorry. I should have told you before. I just didn't know who to trust. I understand. I don't want you here or in your rooms. It's the first place he'd look. Up to my classroom. Lock the doors, draw the blinds, and don't let anyone in. It would be best to clear the girls out of here for the night. Why? What are you going to do? Just clear the school. No. 
No, I won't let you do any more. I don't know why I've let you do what you've done. But it's over now. It's all over. Oh, please. Jessica. Yes, Dr. Clamper. You'll do as you're told. Yes, Dr. Clamper. You'll tell them and the rest of the staff it's because of the power failure. We'll tell them that the power company has notified us that it can't be restored and it would be dangerous. I want everybody out. Yes, whatever you say. It won't be long now. It's almost over. The bus is full, ladies. Try the minibus. Out of your room. take our own cars? Uh, Dragon Lady's orders. Doesn't want any of you pure and hard going out and making clandestine rendezvous. Hmm. Don't you dare tell that battle axe I called her a Dragon Lady. Oh, it's our secret forever. Yes, forever. Oh, by the way, Professor Jenkins said to tell you according to the register there's still eight girls here. Uh, tell him I'll transport them along with the headmistress. All right? All right, Rhody. Sounds like some cars. The police! Hey, they'll come in. Dr. Clampett said to stay here. I'm not waiting! Elizabeth, wait! Elizabeth! She told me to wait for her. She's going to punish me. I know she is. But she's wrong. It's a lie. Somebody told her a lie about me. I wasn't in that room. I would never go down there. What's wrong with her? I don't know. Did you tell her? I bet you were the ones who told her I went down to that room. Forget her. Get the police. Hey, what are you doing? You can't use that phone if Miss Abigail doesn't let anybody use that phone. Operator? I can't get anybody. The phones must be out, too. Everybody's gone. I saw them leave. What are you talking about? All the buses. They were headed toward town. But, but I think we're the only ones here. You better get out of this office. Miss Abigail will give you demerits if she catches you here. Where's your car? The keys are gone. Somebody took them. Look, 
We could walk to the highway and hitch a ride into town. No, that's a long way in the dark. It's better than staying here with her. <sighs> yeah, and whoever killed Professor Delacroix. <sighs> I wish we had a gun or something. Did she keep one? Let's find out. What are you doing? If Abigail will throw you out of school, she'll be back any minute. Wait a minute, there's one in the basement. When I was down there looking for props, there was one in a steel cabinet in the basement. Are you sure? Yeah, one of the maintenance men kept it there, I think. Um, a gun and a couple of rifles. No, you can't go down there. No, you can't go down there. That's why I'm in trouble. Miss Abigail doesn't let anybody go down there. Okay, what do you say? Is it the highway or do we try for the gun? Let's get the gun. No, please, please don't go down there. She'll think I sent you. Please don't go down there. Please. Listen, you just stay here. And, and we'll tell her that you didn't have anything to do with it, okay? Okay. You tell her I was never in that room. Don't tell her any damn thing you please. You just stay put. Okay. okay. But he'll find out. Miss Abigail will tell him. She always tells him everything. Rifles are gone. The revolver? I don't know. I'll look. It's empty. Hold it. You know how to use that thing? Yeah, I was brought up on a farm. My father had these around all the time. Come on, let's get out of here. It could be one of the girls we've got to see. Okay. Walk to one side in case I have to use this thing. for you, Elizabeth. Look around you. Eight of my girls died here. Eight, all unwanted, like you, like all of them. I have waited too long. Now I have found eight to take their place. And like them, abandoned once again. It's no coincidence that we don't have families, Elizabeth. He wanted it that way. It has to be that way. Jody, Roberta, who do you think he is? We know. Malleus Maleforcum, the hammer of witches. Some call him Satan. I welcome what man rejects. I beckon what man despises. I forgive what man will not. Well, you don't believe that, that he's Satan. None of you can really believe that. They believe what they must. Tonight they will sacrifice their 
mortal souls. Willingly. Hear where it started. And they will return with me. You're crazy. Listen to me. I don't know what kind of a hold he has on you. But he's killed Delacroix and Debbie. We know, Elizabeth. Come with me willingly. Your sister would not. No, Lucy Dembra. Don't listen to him. Look, there are eight of us against his one. You've got to get out of here before it's too late. For God's sake! For his sake or mine? They've already made that choice. Come. meet when I have the eighth. I forgot to water these plants today. You won't tell Miss Abigail, will you? I won't tell Miss Abigail anything. Now, come on, we have to get out of here. Give me that. What are you doing? People told us about the power danger. Looks like we're a little late. Out? No, not everyone. Or if they had mistress, she'll have to notify their families. They didn't have any. Where? Where's Dr. Cup? Where he belongs. Thank you. 
Loretta Lockhart. We're the welcoming committee from your class. Now, the dragon lady had us memorize your short welcoming speech. I'm afraid it'll make you throw up. I'm Elizabeth Morgan. We know. Um, we've been expecting you. This is Debbie Jones. Hi. And that's Jody Keller. Hi. Hi. Uh, Jody, why don't you get the bag? Okay. The dragon lady wanted us to uh, show you around. To see that you were fed, housed, settled. Made to feel like one of us within 15 minutes of your arrival. How are we doing? I fit at home already. That's good. The dragon lady Does said. Does the lady have another name? Headmistress. She is a bad painter, a worse sculptress, and a lousy musician. <laughs> She's a perfect headmistress for an academy of fine arts. Those who can do, those who can't teach. But this place has a marvelous reputation. Hey, listen. A lot of the professors are super. Really super. <laughs> Jody's got a crush on the head of the fine arts department. <laughs> we all do. It's a school hobby. Uh-huh. If you like that sort of thing. Yes, collect call, please. Collect to Elizabeth Sayers, Los Angeles. KL58937. Thank you. Martha Sayers. Oh, please hurry. Please. Your sister, Miss Sayers. She's gone crazy in there. 
Screamed and locked the door. I tried all the doors and windows. They're all locked. Excuse me, please. Martha? Martha, it's me, Elizabeth. Open the door, please. Can you break it in? Report, Miss Ayers. Lieutenant, my sister did not commit suicide. She had no reason to kill herself. She was happier than she's been in years. But no one could have gotten into the house. The doors and the windows were all locked from the inside. She did not commit suicide. Why would she catch a plane from Massachusetts, hire a car at the airport, and drive all the way to my house to kill herself? Well, there's no rationale to suicide, Miss Ayers. I understand how upset you are, no, but if you, you could No, you don't just... understand anything. If she was going to kill herself, there were worse times, like when our parents died or when we were separated by different schools hundreds of miles apart, but not now. But you did admit that she was a melancholy girl. That she was lonely. Well, you hardly saw her during the past few years. Then ask her friends at school. We did. Did you try her ex-roommate, Lucy Dembro? Do you really think she would make that much difference? Yes, she was her roommate for two years. She knows Martha. Okay, Miss Sayers. We went to Miss Lucy Dembrow in Massachusetts and to some of the other classmates at the academy and the headmistress. No one could give us any further information. I can't accept that. There just isn't enough evidence for us to pursue it any further. I'm sorry. But the case is closed. Not for me, it isn't. fly into the funeral. I mean, there was no warning, none. I told the police when they called it, everything was fine. I mean, just great. Martha was busy and working, so was I. If you don't like the, the sherry, I can run up for some no, vodka. No, please don't worry about it. I don't oh. drink much. I just grabbed this little place right after graduation. I sure hope my guardian sings for the loot. Lucy, did Martha keep a diary or anything like that? Oh, you know it better than that. No memories for her. Life was now. Well, something was going very wrong. It had to be. Nothing I knew of. Sure you wouldn't like some vodka? No, thank you. She wasn't upset or anxious or anything? Oh, anxious, maybe. About our graduation and you and her getting your own place and finally being together. Nothing else. Like what? Someone, something at the school, maybe. <laughs> it has to be something there. No. It had to be something that happened at the academy. I would know if there was anything else. No, I'm telling you, no. I'm going there. Well, you won't find out anything. Nothing. Nothing. I've got to try. You won't tell anyone you saw me. Or that you talked to me, promised me. Do you understand to no one? I, I'm sorry. Martha's death and everything. I, please forgive me. Yes, of course. Thank you. 
Ron. She told me she'd be here. You a sister? Yes. She just went to the store. Asked me to give you a key. 